Yeah, yeah, that's that's a, that's that's, I was going to pick that one before right. you have here. Deposit your penny, sir. Thank you, Ken. You'll walk this way. And here you go. Oh, that's big. Should be ready to go. Go ahead and open that up. This side up. Oh my gosh. Cat whiskers. Ball of human hair found outside the Willie Street co-op in Madison, Wisconsin. Hair pins found on the streets of Madison, Wisconsin from 2007 to 2009. Someone's lost to pee. What the heck? <laughs> Weird. What is it though? Here. This is the, these are tools of unknown origin. They certainly are unknown. S a scope, a scraper. Although this is kind Sculpting of a, tools, a brutal, a brutal <laughs> scraping for the human body. More than my money's worth. More than two cents worth. Careful with this little book that we found on the street, and you can open it up with. Be careful because it's really old. What? And it's all Can in you a different this? language because and it's in a different language. It's a spy graph. Exactly, and you can use that because look at look at what you can look at. <gasps> look at this tiny little picture. What do you see? Can't read this. No, I can't read it either. Even though I can speak Spanish and French and I'm learning Hebrew. Hey, there's a teeny tiny rope. Hello? Hello? <laughs> you got your money's worth? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I have professional curiosity since I work in a museum, so. What museum do you work in? I work at the Logan Museum of Anthropology at Beloit College. The more temporary kinds of things that you create, the more interest people have. I mean, that's the way it is in any museum. I mean, if you're changing your exhibit schedule frequently, um, you've got more reason for people to come in. You've got more reason for people to contribute as individuals. So I think it's, a, I think it's part of an entire process that keeps the arts and museums and cultural institutions healthy in a community. Is that what she's holding? <laughs> 